I think especially as Aboriginal artists, our truth is what makes us who we are in our culture and our spirituality. And that truth resonates into the community. Mob or judge them, that's tomorrow's children. Because all we do is for them, really. And if they can get these words, get the pronunciation of it correct, yeah. they can then start using it in, in daily life, and they do. It's, you know? it's relationships between mothers and fathers, between parents and children, between children and their grandparents. It's, it's that deterioration of that family relationship and connection. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people can now stand with uh, huge humility and, and be very proud of who we are and what we are and the way in which we have uh, survived. Welcome folks again to Beyond the Boundary Road. I'm Mandanara Bales. And I'm Fred Leone. Today we're going to be exploring the world of Indigenous Australian art and identity through the eyes of the highly talented and renowned artist Jandamara Cad. Jandamara is also going to tell us his story of how he became a successful artist. Thank you so much for joining us, Jandamara. Hey, thank you, brother and sister. Yeah. Good to be here and share yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah deadly, deadly. So could Definitely. you start off with telling us who your mob is and where you're from? Uh, my mob is Yorta Yorta mob, so they're up on the border of Murray River people, border of uh, Victoria and New South Wales, uh, Kamagunja, Barma Forest, all around that area, near Echuca, and um, yeah, that's where my people from, but I grew up in Brisbane. Went down to Melbourne about uh, 18 years ago, lived there for a while. Beautiful country, love it, but I'm up uh, Gubby Gubby way now and out yeah, there with the, the beaches. Hey, yeah, you're Yorta Yorta, you're, 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 you're talking about Yorta Yorta, I know, um, Briggs. Yes, I'm related yeah, to the yeah, Briggs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in a, my mop there. Yeah, yeah. A, he's a big rapper at the moment, Briggs. Yeah, he, yeah, so he is his last name, but um, yeah, he's going. Yeah, deadly. he's going deadly, yeah. yeah. Talk about that word, deadly. Yeah. So, Jan Amara, brother, can you tell me why art is so crucial within First Nations communities, do you think? Um, I, I reckon traditionally for so long, you know, uh, our people have been expressing themselves through dance and through storytelling and through music and uh, all of those ways, as well as art, you know, and art's been so vital to show their connection to their spirituality, to the land, to their communities, to their people, to their culture. And also, uh, I think art's so important today for Aboriginal people to express the social conscience messages that relate to them, you know, what they've gone through to allow true healing to happen and bring awareness to such issues, uh, which is more in contemporary style of art today. So how did it all start for you, the, the journey of being an artist? Um, I, I started painting when I was 15. I ran away from home and lived on the streets. and. Uh, after about three years on the streets, I was introduced to a paintbrush by a, a social worker and for me it was, a light went on and it just flicked to me that some way I could express myself in a way that wasn't through my fist, it wasn't through my anger and frustration of the experiences that I experienced, abuse of sexual, emotional and physical abuse that led me to those points. So it was a beautiful turnaround point for me. Wow. As an artist, how do you think your practice has changed over time? From, where, from the beginning to, to where, you are, where you're at now? Um, for me, uh, when I first started, it was self-expression. It was about expressing that pain and that hurt within myself. But then over time, I felt it evolved to, naturally to think about the ones around me and about, you know, not only Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, but all different races that feel that oppression and racism or, or, or you know, the, the stuff that they go through, the hardships. That Those things over time became something I really, really felt a passion to express through my art. And, bring healing not only in a local and national level, but a global level, bringing awareness through the art. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and with the art, especially with our culture, it, it's a big part of, of keeping our culture alive, the arts. Yes. Um, proving that we, we, we were here 60,000 years ago yes. with the rock, uh, the rock arts. So with the traditional arts and contemporary arts, what do you think about, do you use a bit of both? Um, do you see them both as um, as valuable as each other? Yes, yes, most definitely. I started out painting tribal stories from my area and, and using a lot of symbols and things there, which was beautiful, but I felt I was limited in my expression. So then I started doing portraiture, which is capturing an image of whoever the subject is, something that so speaks volumes, ca captures them so poignantly, it speaks volumes about them, but then having the Aboriginal style behind it which complemented the portrait in a way that they were both telling stories together and today living it for me it's living in a western 
but also that traditional coming together mm. in a harmonious way to express Those those two stories. worlds. Yes. Yeah, even in just, just your last two answers and that answer, I find it the same across art form. So you do art, but I do music and found it the same healing process and using the contemporary, you know, everyone says, oh, I'll hip hop, rap, rap. But it's like, it's taking that contemporary um, tool and utilizing it to express ourselves in a way that we couldn't have, you know? Abs yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the young ones relate to that more because obviously, you know, they don't know as much from the traditional parts. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. With the artworks, what would be your favourite artwork that you've done, or, uh, or, yeah, or, or one or two of them? Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, there's probably four of them, and it's really hard to narrow it down to one out of the hundreds that I've gone through over time. Someone, someone might get a bit um, angry. No, yeah. no. <laughs> there's there's oh, one of favorite, Uncle Bob yeah. Randall, which we went out to Uluru, my family and I. He's a member of Stolen Generation, and you know he's taken away at the age of six, taken to Croker Island, which is 1,500 kilometres away from his home yeah. country. And there for 33 years he comes back, his mother's passed away, a lot of his family were murdered, but he walks with an open heart and talks about walking as one mob. There's one of Mick Dodson, him and two worlds, balancing living in a western world and being a strong warrior fighting for the rights of all people. One of Gilbert Laurie, which is a Bunjalung man and a beautiful, you know, smile of him with a couple of teeth missing, such a rich character has a hat on called uh, with one mob and the other one's Uncle Archie and Aunty Ruby. Yeah. I mean they're no, my soul. Yeah. My soul. Yeah. Yeah. What would you what would you like to see changed um, in the art world? I think I'd like to see a few things change. One of the big ones is the politics, you know. Art so as with so many other things, political. A lot of people gauge art on all these concepts. You know, it's like looking at the sky. If you look at the sky and you no longer see the sky, then, then you're not seeing the beauty. And I think as art, it's seen through the eyes of people who put it in boxes and categories. This is what an Aboriginal artist is, or this is what this means. And a lot of times when you go to art competitions or shows, it's about who the artist is or what they do, rather than who they are, rather than what they've done, I should say, which is getting back to the basics and the beauty of it. What has been the most memorable response from from a person in the audience to, to some of your artwork? Uh, my wife Amy and I uh, toured uh, 16 huge portraits of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander role models recently that finished in March and went for a whole year and it was called Past, Present, Future and it was about those role models that had gone through such adversity like stolen generation or racism and come out with open hearts and I celebrated their stories within portraits, some of them being Jessica Malboy, Dan Sultan, Uncle Archie, Aunty Ruby, um, Sir Doug Nichols, from all ages and eras to, to the young ones. We toured this and it was an overwhelming response by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people brought to tears because yeah, yeah. we had the borrows, bios up with these paintings and uh, they were just so affected. But even non-Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people were so moved the, the design of this exhibition was to change the negative stereotypes and to see the value in our people. It, it was the most amazing thing I'd ever experienced, and beyond measurement of finances or, or whatever else you could measure it with. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the what advice yeah. would you give to any young fellas, whether they're up and coming artists or still trying to find their way in life? For me, perseverance, never give up. And if someone says you can't do it, or you shouldn't do it, or you won't be able to do it, don't listen, follow your heart, because the fashions and trends of art will go, come and go, but following your heart, your truth ripples and, and connects with other people's truths. And I think especially as Aboriginal artists, our truth is what makes us who we are in our culture and our spirituality, and that truth that resonates into the community. Uh, can you express to us how, how it makes you feel getting uh, acknowledgement from you know, like the Attorney General's office and universities and stuff like right. that. It's great as an artist to be acknowledged for the work that I do, but for me, the overwhelming uh, gratitude for it is, is the response to the message. The Attorney General's office bought a piece uh, that I had in an art competition, which over 800 people entered into, and it won the National Indigenous Award, and it was about reconciliation and. Um, in that uh, 
the messages that were on that piece were about showing the story from colonialisation, settlement, all the way through to stolen generation, taking the, uh, the elders being imprisoned and murder and genocide. But then it comes through the other side to show walking together and, and sorry day and all those. And for them to put that on their wall, absolutely amazing, because they were part of the policies of yeah. administering those exactly. things. So. Thank you so much um, for coming on the show, Jandamara, and sharing your stories yeah, and your successes being an artist. And we wish you all the best. Oh, thank you very yeah, much. Thanks. Gratitude. Blessings. <laughs>